I am here because I believe that the question what next is different for men and women. And before I delve into my topic, I would like to conduct a small experiment. May I please request all of you to stand in your seats? Very kind. Thank you so much. Now, as I ask a series of questions to all of you, if you want to answer them, listen to the, uh, to the instructions very carefully. Please sit down. If you have not experienced workplace harassment, I repeat, please sit down. If you have not experienced workplace harassment, please sit down. If your salary is not dependent on your gender. Please sit down if you are not aware of the Posh Act. Please sit down if you have never been asked in an interview if you are planning to get married soon and have babies. And finally, please sit down if you are not a female. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we are about three of us standing here. Please, ma'am, please take your seats. Thank you so much. This experiment was just to spark a little thought in your heads about how this question, what next is different for men and women. And before, again, I begin, I would like to thank this world for being so generous with women, for showing us love, gratitude, kindness and respect wherever required. And this has been a scenario for centuries now. You know, the great kings and emperors of the world, they died trying to protect the country. They had very important tasks at their hands. And the women too were given important, slightly different responsibilities. Like if to be satid or not, or be boycotted by the community, to choose Johar or not, or get raped or die at the hands of the enemies of the kingdom. You know, as I was growing up during the 90s, and I'm sure all of you who were growing up during that time would agree, we have seen the world evolve from no phones to trunk calls to the internet being available for unrestricted commercial use. The World Trade Organization was created. Google was founded. Thank you, Google. All my research is from Google. So while all this happened in a not so parallel universe, women were dealing with their own problems. There were dowry debts. There was female feticide. There was witch hunting. And as the world geared up to conquer new horizons and explore a new era of technology and advancement, women's statuses grew too. You know, women were no longer dealing with the problem of not being able to get educated, having no career choices, and not have the whole soul ambition of getting married and raising children. So as the world moved on, women also moved on to explore new problems in the new century. They were dealing with objectification and how? They were dealing with acid attacks. They were dealing with limited career choices. And that too, a woman would be considered successful if she was married at the right age and could bear children at the right age. You know, we have always been portrayed as the only species on, the, on this planet who had to do nothing to save ourselves from the perils of the society. We just had to look our best, be the damsel in distress, and a knight in shining armor would come to our rescue. You know, we could die not doing anything trying to save ourselves, but we were not allowed to defend ourselves. In case a woman chose a life partner and the parents didn't approve, of course there were going to be consequences. So, you know, by chance a lady got educated, she made a career for herself. Her destiny would only be fulfilled if she was married and she had a man besides him. I remember when I was young, these conversations were all around me. And I remember thinking once upon a time, what if we were all supposed to be born as men? And by some manufacturing defect, we were in, in fact born as women. 
You know, we have to bear the brunt of being born a non-man all our life, as much as you would like to deny it. It's the truth even today. There were some other factors like if a woman couldn't give birth to a son, as illogical and unscientific it is, it was always the woman who was at fault. So come the 20th century, the era of computers, iPad was launched, global climate agreement, we fought COVID, we fought terrorism, there was something else the women were fighting. WHO indicates that one in three, that is 30% of women worldwide, have been subjected to either physical or sexual violence. Reported violence against women between 2008 to 2021, approximately 20 lakhs. Reported rapes between 2008 to 2021, of course considering cases like Nirbhaya and the latest Shraddha's case, approximately 4,20,000. Reported insult to modesty of women, approximately 3,000 per year. But I know that these are just the official records. You know why? Because each one of you sitting in this room, I can guarantee you that you know at least one woman in your lives who has gone through these atrocities. Of course, not to forget all the unreported cases during the pandemic alone. How times have changed, everyone tells me. I remember when I wanted to choose a career, I had two options. To be an engineer and to be a doctor. But my whole soul ambition in life, as I was told by relatives, families, friends around me, even some women around me, was to find the right husband. We could do whatever we want, times have changed, just as long as we conform to the norms of the society. For example, I can work wherever I want, just as long as I can come back home in time to make dinner for my family. I can wear what I want, as long as everyone I know in my life approves of it. I can eat what I want, just as long as I can eat after my man. I can work for as long as I want, as long as I can give birth and I have the time to raise a child. I can work wherever I want, as long as I don't speak my mind, I laugh at all these sexist, misogynist jokes, and I'm ready to work with sexual offenders. I can be as skilled as I want, as long as I don't demand a salary. I can be bold and independent and self-sufficient, as long as I'm okay being called names. You know, as we are moving ahead, everything around us is evolving. Internet is now essential for survival. And as much as I would like to think that we have modernized ourselves and we are very woke, there are certainly a lot of things that we are okay with that we should not be okay with. And just to add to all the data that I showed you, right from the beginning, I have met a lot of women through my journey who have quoted the things that I'm going to say next. I remember being molested multiple times the first time when I was six years old. I remember being told that I should be married off at the age of 16 because I lost my mother and I was a liability to the family. I remember going for multiple interviews and acing them but being asked if I'm planning to get married soon and have babies. When I started biking, people thought that I'm not a man, I'm a characterless woman because I go on long rides with group of people and of course to constantly hear the joke, women can't ride, women can't drive. I remember being told that the only reason women were hired in the offices was to send fancy emails, make presentations, look pretty and add glamour to the office party. I remember being told how I definitely had a loose character because my job required me and still does to stay late sometimes. I remember being introduced as someone divorced. I remember being told that I couldn't get the salary that I want because a man has more responsibilities. And I remember being looked down upon for speaking my mind and being strong-headed. So what next, you may ask? 
you know, I will continue to be strong, independent, confident, and all of that without having to compromise my respect, my dignity, my security, and opportunities. But there are a lot of women out there who are still struggling to speak, who are waiting to be heard, who are waiting to be given equal opportunities, equal chances. And as we move ahead, I urge you to put your own conscious, your beliefs, your faiths, and your thoughts into perspective. It might sound a bit cringeworthy, but let's not conduct ourselves in front of other women or women strangers to us the way we would not conduct ourselves in front of our mothers, sisters, wives, and the other friends that we have. If a woman like me, who also has gone through some atrocities in life, today I have a stage, I have a platform, and I have the option of my voice being heard. But what about the women who can't even speak, let alone them being heard? So I urge you to think about them and how the right to life and hope is being denied to them. It's the time to not only speak, it's the time for actions, because we've been having these dialogues for a very long time now. And things won't change just because you and I want them to. Things will change when we stand up and we start working towards them. And to add to all of this, let me just sum it up quickly by telling you something that we should not forget, which literally translates to, to the Devi, who in all beings is abiding as genus, original cause of everything. Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu, Jati Rupena Sansthita, Namastasai, 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 Namo Namah.